Hello, America. Tonight, I ask you to uh, stay with the program. This is not a soundbite program tonight, although it will be taken out of context and it will be used and it will be called fear mongering. What I call this is question with boldness. Questions that need answers. We must have answers. And I am only following the directions of the President of the United States. He told us how to find out what he really believes, and that is exactly what we're going to do. In a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about health care, the views of Obama's czars and his close advisors, and why it's important to look there. It's important to know where they stand. But first, I want to start someplace, show you the beginnings of and the history of eugenics, which means basically creating a master race by discouraging reproduction with people with genetic defects and other undesirable traits. Now I know right now the people who are writing their blogs in the basement are saying, oh my gosh, we got them now. Glenn is saying eugenics is coming. No, I am not. I am not saying anything like that at all. Eugenics are not coming. Eugenics have been wildly discredited by the Nazis, and only truly evil people would go down that road. But it did happen, and it's important that we look at that time period, because there is a lot we can learn from the past mistakes that led to that point. Please watch this. Eugenics is not a new idea, and it didn't start with the Nazis, but with American and British socialists and progressives who thought that through measures like prohibition and later birth control, they could cure the ills of modern society, such as poor public hygiene, rising population among lower classes, and urban crowding. Indiana passed the first sterilization law in 1907 for confirmed criminals, idiots, imbeciles, and rapists. And in the next 30 years, 29 other states followed suit, along with Canada and most of Europe. Eugenics infected the mindset of intellectuals such as the leader of the new liberalism movement of the early 20th century, Herbert Crowley. He wrote a book in 1909 called The Promise of American Life, in which he declared that the state must, quote, interfere on behalf of the really fittest. Eugenics was also a popular thought for Presidents Woodrow Wilson, Teddy Roosevelt, and their advisors. In 1912, a year before he was president, New Jersey's Governor Woodrow Wilson created a board of examiners of feeble-minded epileptics and other defectives. Under it, the state could determine, quote, when procreation is inadvisable, like for criminals, prisoners, poor kids, and the ill-defined, other defectives, end quote. Roosevelt's close advisor, Charles Van Hyes, said, quote, He who thinks of himself not primarily, but of his race and of its future, is the new patriot, end quote. Former President Roosevelt later endorsed Madison Grant's Passing of the Great Race, a book that Hitler once referred to as his Bible. What most history textbooks seem to ignore is that before the Nazis took power, Germans lagged behind Americans and Europeans in eugenics. But World War I and the Great Flu pandemic basically turned doctors into social planners, and Hitler and the Nazis took the logic of public health to totalitarian extremes. They made the central policy goal affecting employment, marriage, medicine, and more. The same year Hitler joined the Nazi party in 1920, the Nazis rounded up hundreds of thousands of disabled, elderly, and mentally ill, and exterminated them as, quote, useless bread gobblers, or life unworthy of life, end quote. Back to America. Eugenics was being effectively written into the Constitution. In the Buck versus Bell case in 1927, progressive lawyers stood on the flimsy ground of a Massachusetts vaccination law to keep Carrie Buck from reproducing. We know now she wasn't retarded. But to add insult to injury, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes infamously wrote, quote, three generations of imbeciles are enough, end quote. Seven years later, Hitler wrote to the president of the American Eugenics Society to ask for a copy of his famous Case for Sterilization, which called for forced sterilization of some 10 million Americans. During that year, the Nazis sterilized over 50,000 unfit Germans, which caused an American eugenicist to complain, quote, the Germans are beating us at our own game. 
Nazi eugenic idea evolved naturally into the eventual Holocaust and the deaths of six million Jews, as well as millions of other innocent people. America, there is so much anger and hatred in this country right now. Um, and it is important that we have an honest conversation here and understand clearly what is being said on this program. No one is saying that eugenics are coming. The builder of the master race was only part of the problem in Germany made possible after they began to devalue life. They tried to figure out how much is a life worth and put a price on how much each individual was worth. And some were worth more than others. I want to show you a poster that I, um, I saw this morning getting ready for the show, and I want you to know um, that I have a daughter that was born with cerebral palsy, and they said that when she was born that she would never walk or talk or feed herself. <clears throat> she went to college. They were wrong. This poster bothers me so much because the hand of the person shown in this poster um, remind, reminds me of my uh, reminds me of my daughter's hand. This is from Nazi Germany. It says in German, if you can get a tight shot here, it says in German, basically, it's going to cost 60,000 marks to keep this man alive. As you see, he's sitting here with a gnarled hand. He's a sweet guy in everything, the poster says, but his quality of life, it's a shame. But your time is up. Then there is this poster. This is also from Germany in uh, World War II. This one shows an institution here and all of the houses that could be built with the money if we could just eliminate this institution. Now here is what the President of the United States has told us today. The rumor that's been circulating a lot lately is this idea that somehow the House of Representatives voted for death panels that will uh, basically pull the plug on grandma uh, because we've decided that we don't, it's too expensive to let her live anymore. The intention of the members of Congress was to give people more information so that they could handle issues of end-of-life care when they're ready on their own terms. It wasn't forcing anybody to do anything. I don't believe that this is a matter that is appropriate for laughter or for jokes. I want you to clearly understand that I don't think he wants to kill your grandmother or unplug your grandmother. It would be truly an evil person that would do that. However, what happened in Germany was they couldn't afford health care for all. You see, they had devalued their mark, our dollar. They had devalued it so much because the pr government just started to print money. Does that sound familiar? It has only been done a few times uh, in the world's history, and it has never ended any other different way than it did in the Weimar Republic. That forced Germany into an economic collapse. America, I ask you to take a good, long, hard look at what's going on today. You must ask with boldness, could our economy, the way we are currently spending and printing at will, possibly go into some sort of emergency situation? Could it collapse? Is it possible? Is it possible that our debt is so high that we can't pay it back or we have to make tough decisions and possibly ration health care? The answer everyone will tell you is yes. So then, is it crazy, is it ridiculous to say, all right, if we have a crisis in our monetary system, what will our government and our president do? To figure that out, what he's going to think or what he thinks currently, we need to listen to his words on how to decide what his policies, he told us this in the campaign, so we're only following his directions. Listen carefully and figure out how to decide what his policies are going to be and what they are.